that changes now. The Metta Sutta. It's called the Garuniya Metta Sutta because the first words are Garuniya. So what should be done. And the whole phrase is what should be done by one skilled in aims. To be skilled in aims, you have to think about the long term. What would be conducive to a true happiness? And much of the sutta is about goodwill. You live a life that doesn't place a burden on other people. And your attitude towards all beings is that may they be happy. And you protect that attitude as a mother would protect her only child. Sometimes we hear it said that we should cherish everybody in the same way that a mother cherishes her child. But that's impossible. There are people out there you like, people you don't like. Now we're going to protect them all. It is possible, as the Buddha said, to provide safety from your quarter by not breaking the precepts. But the important thing you want to protect is your attitude of goodwill. Because goodwill basically is the attitude of right view. There's a passage where the Buddha says anyone who has ill will has wrong view. So look into that. The right view is basically about, on the one hand, mundane review is about abandoning what's unskillful, developing what's skillful. And you do that. Why? Because you want to try and find true happiness. And what is true happiness involved? It involves not harming anybody. So there it is, woven into basic right view is goodwill. And then, of course, with the Four Noble Truths. The fact that you're trying to put an end to suffering shows you have goodwill for yourself. And the way you do it, of course, is through the Eightfold Path, and that involves right view, right resolve all the way down through right concentration, including right speech, right action, again, virtue, where you're acting in harmless ways. So you want to protect your right view, protect your goodwill, regardless. And this means making it independent of everything else, making it bigger than everything else. The image that the Buddha gives is of goodwill as large as the earth. Goodwill is as large and as cool as the river Ganges. Goodwill is like space. Now beings walk on the earth, they swim in the Ganges, and they go through space. They don't encompass the space. The space encompasses them. The earth supports them. The water supports them. So think of your goodwill being like that. Beings can come and go in your life, and they come and go within the framework of your goodwill. But it is a determination. You have to be determined on this mindfulness, as the Buddha said. It's something you have to keep in mind, otherwise you forget. And go back to your old attitude of having goodwill for people you like and not for people you don't like. When you're trying to make it universal, it's a Brahma attitude, which is higher than the human attitude. That means you've got to make your mind like a Brahma mind. We do that through the concentration. You focus the mind on a pleasure that has nothing to do with sensuality. In fact, it's when you, the mind gets past sensual thoughts, secluded from sensual thoughts, and secluded from all types of unskillful dhammas, unskillful qualities, from wrong view all the way up through wrong mindfulness. You lift the level of your mind, and you give it a good foundation inside, a sense of well-being inside that doesn't have to depend on any harm to anybody at all. It comes from a quiet mind, totally generated by the mind. So we focus on the breath, of course, 
and in working on the breath, we work on the mind. But the intention to do this, of course, comes from within the mind. It's not the case that the breath pulls at you and says, hey, 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 pay attention to me. It's because we have right view, realizing that the mind needs to be provided with a sense of nourishment inside that doesn't depend on things outside. And we look for it in the breath, and then we cultivate the breath. It all comes from within. And that's a good message. We live in this world where things go up and down. And there are times when you wonder why you would want to be in the human race at all. You look at the behavior of people around you. But then you remind yourself there have been good people. And they've shown us the path. They've shown us how we can raise the level of our minds, deepen the level of our minds, make them more solid make them more encompassing, larger than the bad things that people do outside. And that way we have a foundation inside we can depend on. So we focus on the breath as a way of showing goodwill for ourselves, finding happiness in a way that doesn't need to involve anybody else at all. And then from that happiness inside, that well-being inside, then we're much more likely to behave in ways that are skillful. And it is easier to protect our goodwill as a mother would protect her child. Think of the example of the bandits trying to cut you up into pieces. The Buddha said, even in that case, you have to have goodwill. And the goodwill starts with them. There's a long tradition that dates from the very last books of the canon that were added well after the Buddha had passed away. They recommend that when you're developing goodwill, you start with yourself, and then you go to people who are easy, and then to people who are progressively harder. But in that case, the Buddha said, you have to start with the bandits, because who knows how much longer you're going to last. They're cutting you up into little pieces, so you have to go straight to the bandits. And then from then, have goodwill for everybody. Because as you're dying, you don't want to be focused on ill will for anybody at all. As you go through the canon, you get impressed by how much emphasis the Buddha places on that last moment of life. But your attitude is, you're going to be living a good life. And the results of your good karma will show, but they might get cut off or interrupted for a while. If there's a drop in your mind state at the moment of death. And conversely, you may have some bad karma. But if you have a change of heart and the mind, the mind state is lifted, you get a brief reprieve at least. And maybe in that reprieve you have the opportunity to develop the noble paths and noble attainments. So you can escape a lot of the karma that you would have otherwise had to had to experience. At least it would be greatly weakened before you go. So you want to make sure that your goodwill is quick. You're being sought up, you don't want to think, well, may I be happy, may my parents be happy, may the people I love be happy, may my... And then finally get to the bandits, who knows where you're going to be at that point. You have to start with the bandits, and then go to all beings. So practice your goodwill so that it's quick with regard to anybody. That it becomes the default mode. In this way you become skilled in aims, skilled in the goal. This is what should be done by someone who wants to be skilled in the goal. Years back I was sitting in a class where this sutra was being explained. The teacher got through the first line, this, this is what should be done. Someone raised his hand, couldn't even finish the sentence. Someone raised his hand and said, I thought there were no shoulds in Buddhism. And the poor teacher was stymied. He spent the whole morning trying to explain. But it's pretty easy to explain. 
There, of course, there are shoulds. The Buddha said his duty as a teacher was to give you a sense of what should and should not be done. What we don't have is people giving commandments, forcing you to practice. We're here of our own free will, because we've seen all the harm that can be done when our actions are not skillful, we're not, when we're not skilled in aims. And we want to be skilled in aims, skilled in the goal, skilled in knowing what will lead to true happiness. And the way things are in the world is that if you want true happiness, you've got to have goodwill. So you start with good intentions in this way, and then you develop them. It doesn't stop with simply good intentions. The Buddha teaches you that you have to add heedfulness if you really want to be skilled in aims. Add heedfulness to your goodwill. Realizing that your actions do make a difference, and so you want to look carefully at what you do and the real results of what you do. You don't simply say, well, I have good, good intentions and say it doesn't matter how things fall because your good intentions are all expected out of you. You're a human being. You have eyes. You should see the results of your actions, and if you thought what you're doing was good, but then it turns out it wasn't good, well, you should learn. That's a sign that your goodwill is really genuine. You're not just going through the motions. You're not thinking nice sentiments and leaving them there. You want to carry through all the way. So you're heedful of the little things, heedful of the harm that can be done by little things, and heedful of the good that can be done by good little things. And that way your goodwill becomes complete, and you really are skilled in aims. Taking yourself to a place where you really want to go.